Now, let's look at nationalism in Europe. When the European integration project emerged after the Second World War, it was very much seen as a way of taming nationalism. Robert Schumann, in his famous declaration of 1950, noted that the European integration project is about the coming together of the nations um, of Europe, requiring the elimination of age-old opposition of France and Germany. So for him, it was about taming European nationalist antagonisms. But that relationship of European integration and Europe and nationalism is a lot more complicated. In fact, when nationalisms emerged in the 18th century in the context of the French Revolution, of the Napoleonic Wars and the resistance of uh, many people to Napoleonic rule, uh, nationalism often thought about Europe as a unifying goal. So nationalist activists, intellectuals, saw each other, the other nations, as partners to combat the conservative empires which were established at the Congress of Vienna. And the idea was that these joint national movements could overthrow the conservative monarchical order. This is best represented by Giuseppe Mazzini, who established the Young Europe, the Giovane Europa, in 1834 as a kind of nationalist international. Now, the challenge of these national movements was that the empires and the states often co-opted the national movements. They became nationalizing empires. They incorporated the ideas of nationalism into their raison d'être and their raison d'état. And the newly emerging nation states coming together, for example, in Germany and in Italy in the second half of the 19th century, found out that often they had quite a lot of antagonism to one another. Already in 1848, during the revolutions across Europe, it became quite clear that who claims which territory and which people would bring nationalist movements in competition with one another. So this is the inherent tension of nationalism and ideas of Europe. Many of them sought Europe as a framework to cooperate against empires, but at the same time, they find themselves in conflict. Now, this conflict is embodied most notably in the First World War and before that in the Balkan Wars, where different nation states or transforming empires into nation states came into conflict with one another um, over mass mobilization and nationalism. So did with that, I, with that war the idea of nationalism in Europe finally diverge? Well, not quite. During the interwar period, we see the rise of fascism and national socialism. Well, they envisaged a very different kind of society. In the case of national socialism, a highly racialized understanding of the world and dismissing nation and state, at least in the traditional way, uh, throughout. But they also envisaged some kind of European cooperation, some kind of fascist international or European fascist movements. But their highly hierarchical understanding, and particularly of Nazi Germany, made cooperation impossible. So when Hitler's empire was established in Europe during the Second World War, there was no space for European cooperation, but it was German dominance and uh, occupation and mass murder, Holocaust, genocide, which made any idea of European integration among these movements unimaginable. But there were, of course, collaborators who envisaged such idea of fascist European cooperation. Of course, with the defeat in the Second World War, that idea of cooperation became redundant or marginal and was replaced by the idea of European integration, which we see today.